I'm Tom. Welcome back to the shop and an episode of Dog Meat Engineering. Let's get cracking. All right, what we got here is a, uh, a machinery lifting wedge that I created after I um, uh, saw a, uh, a hydraulic, uh, a similar hydraulic uh, version. A friend of mine was having a machine, uh, a CNC machine set up in his shop and uh, the techs that were setting the uh, machine up had a, uh, an, a hydraulic uh, uh, wedge jack that was uh, quite a bit bigger than this, but uh, uh, very similar. You can look them up on the web, um, although uh, the major turnoff is they're quite expensive and quite hard to get your hands on. So wanting one for myself, uh, and one of the reasons is it's extremely low starting height here. This is, you know, in the regime of uh, a quarter of an inch. Uh, that's the, the kind of gap you need, um, you know, to get the thing started. And then it'll lift high enough to get a toe jack under it or wedges or a bar or something else, right? Uh, so it's a good starting tool. Anyway, as you can see, it's... Uh, it's relatively simple. Uh, I made it up out of uh, uh, <laughs> scrap bin engineering stuff. Um, the block or the wedge itself is made out of Delrin. Uh, these are some cold rolled steel flat bars I had around. Uh, the aluminum block came out of a aluminum block. <laughs> um, it's a screw thread, screw thread actuated. Um, probably the hardest part on this particular thing was the uh, the nut. This is a, a 954 aluminum bronze nut that's actually fairly long um, and uh, it's threaded on the OD and threaded on the ID and it has a retention screw there. Um, anyway uh, um, it operates and let's, I'm going to turn it sideways so you can kind of see it a little bit better but you get the idea right? And you can see it's raising it up quite nicely. Now what's interesting is uh, um, the, uh, oh, you know what, I should probably uh, talk about the, there's a thrust bearing arrangement right here, a push-pull thrust bearing arrangement. Anyway, uh, uh, wedges can generate immense forces and, and uh, we're going to show that in just a minute. So this easily lifted all the machines in my shop, not all at once, but my heaviest machine is the Makino at 6,600 pounds, and it lifted the uh, one side of that no problem. And um, but we're gonna we're gonna demo that, and I got a uh, dynamometer set up. So uh, let's check it out. Okay, so here's the experimental setup. So this is a called a ring dynamometer, and this is a compression version that can go up to 20,000 pounds. Okay. Um, and what I have, I just have a steel plate because we have kind of a narrow, uh, a narrow uh, uh, platen to, to work with. And then I have a, uh, a little wedge-shaped piece here that's kind of the reciprocal of this angle here so that we have a nice parallel bearing against the, uh, against the dynamometer. Um, it's not designed to, to normally need this, um, but uh, for testing, uh, I think it's probably... Uh, good idea. So I'm going to bring you in a little closer here in a sec once I kind of get the basics lined up here. All right, there's a tighter shot of that so you can kind of see. Now people are probably looking at this. Um, this is just a piece of stock that I had, uh, scrap bin engineering. I needed a, a spacer <clears throat> and um, a friend of mine uh, gives me uh, these drops off of uh, uh, manufactured Acme threads. And this is a 1144 uh, alloy steel, which is actually really nice stuff to work with. So uh, I have a fair amount of it around. Anyway, uh, I made a spacer that was the appropriate length here. So there's the, uh, uh, the dial on the, uh, the dynamometer. Um, so 2,000, 4,000, 6,000 pounds. So I don't know, I want to kind of show the whole thing happening at once, right? So just kind of remember 10,000 pounds is uh, about the 6 o'clock position, 12,000, you know, etc. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, put a little bit of load on this just for fun. Um, and I'm just using a, 
just a three eighths wrench here. Um, the torque level here is quite low, right? Okay, so there's 2,000 pounds, right? And um, you know, and I got a small wrench that I'm using, so uh, that I dropped. Okay, so uh, you get the idea here, right? Okay, so there's there's four, pretty easy. All right, so let's uh, let's uh, back up here and uh, let me release here, and uh, let's back up and uh, do a uh, do a test here. So I'm going to use uh, this uh, Makita Impact here to uh, to run it up just because it's convenient. All right, there's 2,000 pounds. Four, six, eight, ten, twelve, twelve thousand pounds. Okay, six tons. Fourteen thousand pounds. Um, Honestly, I don't remember how far I've taken this. Let me put the wrench on it here. Yeah, it's getting pretty tight. Actually, um, let's do this. So I got 14,000 pounds on it. I'm going to back up and I got a torque meter or a torque wrench here that we'll put on the screw and just see kind of where we are on the, uh, on the screw. All right. So let's just see where we're at. So it's turning. I'm at 125 inch pounds. That is inch, yeah, inch pounds. And it's turning. So, honestly, that's, <laughs> that's not a lot of torque. Okay. Now, it's a fine thread screw. All right. Actually, let's, uh, let's release here. Let's release. And you can see it drops pretty fast. Okay. So, And then we're released. I'm just going to put a little bit of load on it to keep keep it in place. So you can see the uh, the immense power that a uh, a simple wedge system can uh, can generate. Now, if you want to build one of these for yourself, a couple of things to keep in mind. This angle is pretty important. Um, this is, uh, I believe, 10 degrees. Um, and if you go steeper than that, uh, and when I say steep. <clears throat> excuse me steeper what I mean is if you're trying if you're trying to get more lift out of it and you change the angle in that direction right um, you lose kind of the self-locking uh, abilities of the wedge so um, steel on steel has a particular coefficient of friction right and uh, below or above certain angles um, it's not self-locking okay and it has to do with the the materials involved so steel on cast iron or steel on steel, uh, steel on oily cast iron. So um, uh, to make a safe setup, that angle has to be low enough um, that uh, it's what we call self-locking or self-supporting, right? Um, so keep that in mind. Now, I know you guys are dying to see this lift something proper. So let's go lift one of my machines a little bit and uh, just for fun, okay? And we'll close this video out. All right, here we go. So this is my yam lathe. It's uh, about an 18 by 60, um, five, six thousand pounds, 5,500. Uh, I, I don't have an exact weight. Um, I'm just using this four by four because I have risers under the lathe here. So let's stick that under there. Okay, so we're kind of ready to go. And uh, it might be hard to see that it's lifting. Um, but you can see these are tight right now, the shims. So let's uh, make sure we're going the right way. All right. Should be up. And there it is. This is the heavy end too, right? Watch out for chips there, Mr. Wizard. And easily lifts this. So a bridge pour and a small lay, they... Uh, what, whatever you want, um, you saw the dyno, right? Uh, can easily uh, handle that kind of weight. And then um, something else. Um, if you're working close to the ground, you see the screw is is pretty close to the ground. Well, 
you can just flip it over and now you got total access. Uh, it works in both directions. So, uh, hallelujah. All right. Dog meat wedge. <laughs>